Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 33 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to read and write binary streams. Now, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to write out character streams, and how it basically differs is that when you write out a binary stream, you have to read and write to a file using different methods based off of the type of data you want to write to that file. So it's a different way of manipulating data. Now what I need to do here, I'm going to try and keep this very similar to what we previously did in the last tutorial. So what are we going to do? We're going to create an array of customers and then we're going to call a function called get customers. It's going to populate this array with these customer objects. Now whenever we jump outside of main down here, we're going to have to create private static class customer like we did in the previous tutorial. However, there's going to be completely different types of information in here. We're going to go public. We're going to to create a string and it's going to be the customer's name and then we're going to create an integer and it's going to be the customer's age and then we're going to also create a double and it's going to be customer's debt that they owe us and then public we're going to create a boolean and it is going to be true or false do they owe us money or not and then we're going to create just a simple character which is going to represent the sex for the customer now that we have all those created inside of this customer class we're going to create our constructor that's going to create all of our customer objects a whole bunch of things going to get printed inside of here let's just cut this down and try to save ourselves a little bit of time paste that in there cut this down to that change this into a comma and there we are. So now all that information is going to get passed into this constructor called customer. And then we're going to paste all that in there again. And then we're just going to put this customer name is equal to, and then that's going to be customer name. And this again is a reference to the actual object that's being created here. And I'm just going to copy and paste these in here and then throw semicolons at the end. Okay, and that is all our customer class is going to need to do is to define all those different things. But then what we're going to have to do is create get customers because we have that guy right here. So we're going to create that now. I can go end of customer class just so I know what I'm doing here. Scroll that up. And then I'm going to go private, static, and this is going to return an array of customer objects. Then we're going to go get customers. Nothing's going to be passed to it. And then we're going to go customer, create that array, call it customers is equal to new customer. And again, we're going to define that there's going to be five of those, just like we did in the previous tutorial. And then we're going to go customers bracket. It's going to be zero is equal to new customer. And in here, I'm just going to put in a bunch of random names. Say he's 21. Say he owes us $12.25. Say that it's true that he does owe us money, obviously. And then say that he's male. So then we'll take all these guys. One, two. There we are. Created five of them. And just assign these different index values like that. And then let's just go Paul, Sue, Sally, Mark. And I'm just going to leave everything else the same because that doesn't even matter. Then after we get all of that information assigned in those array, we just need to go return customers. And then what's that going to do? It's going to return this nice array full of customer objects to this array right here. And then we're going to be able to use it. All right, the next thing we need to do, there's all completely different methods here that we're going to be using. We need to create a data output stream. And what this allows you to do is print primitive data types to a file. Whenever you're working with binary streams, the data type is very important. So data output stream, I'm going to call it customer output just like we did before is equal to and then we need to go create file and then inside of here I'm going to paste the location of my file and I'm giving it the extension dat and that's basically all that I need to do there so now what am I going to do I'm going to come in here and create an enhanced for loop and it's going to accept customer objects temporary holding space is going to be person as we cycle through these guys and then I'm going to go customers, which is going to be the array that I'm going to be cycling through. I know a lot of you guys probably already know that, but I like to just review. Create customers. I'm going to pass it the value for person, and I'm also going to pass it customer output so that it's going to be able to save this information in a file. So now what do I need to do? I need to create, create customers, as well as create file, create this method and also create this one. So of course, I'm going to create file first. Bounce down here. 
And I'm going to go private again. So I don't want anybody to be able to access this except for the class itself. I'm going to go data output stream, which is going to be the data type that's going to be returned. And I'm going to go create file. And what's being passed, a string with the file name inside of it. And then I need to wrap all this stuff inside of a try block because what happens if it can't find the file? An exception occurs and all kinds of problems ensue. So we're going to go file and I'm going to say list of names is equal to new file. And then I'm going to pass it the name of my file that I want it to open. And like before, this is just going to create a file object that allows me to work with the files on the hard drive. And there's really no difference between file for character or binary streams for reading or writing. So there's really nothing you need to know there. I'm just accessing the file just like before. And then I'm going to go data output stream. I'm going to call it info to write is equal to new. And the data output stream, just like before, is used to write primitive data to the file. Bounce down here. And I'm going to go new buffered out put stream. And what's that do? It just gathers the information into a buffer or a packet so that everything is passed all at one time instead of individually. And then I'm going to go new file output stream and I'm going to pass it list of names. Bounce down to the end of there. Go like that. Now I skipped over this before but this works every single time whenever you're working with files of any type. If we just do what we do right here, what this is going to do is overwrite anything that is currently in existence. So, for example, if a file already exists, it's going to overwrite it. And that would be exactly the same as if I would go list of names, for example, like that, and put false. That's going to create a new file. However, if I put true inside of there, that is going to append all of this data that I'm going to pass to this file to the end of whatever exists there now. So that's important to know. And just like before, a file output stream is used to write streams of data to the file. So now what are we going to do? We're going to go return info to write. And we're going to be able to pass back the ability to be able to write to this file that we created. It's going to throw E inside of there. And what I'm going to do is just go system out, print line. And I'm just going to type in IO error like that. And then I'm going to go system exit and kill the program altogether if that occurs. And I was asked before, why do I put return null down here? The reason why is this expects a return type right here. So the only way it's going to be able to return something is if no error occurs and so forth and so on. That's why we need to put return null down here. It's more of a compiler issue than anything else. So info to write's been returned. Everything's going wonderful. And all that is passed back to what we have here as customer output. Now we need to call create customers and it's going to shoot all of the information about the individual people to the customer output, which is going to save it to the file. So we need to create create customers. And I like to just close off everything here. I don't know about you, but I sometimes get confused. So I like to put in things like that. So little comments so I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go private, static, void, create customers. And what has it been passed? It's been passed customer object that I'm going to call customer. And it's also been passed a stream that's going to allow me to output information to the file. So that's good. Everything that I need. The customer I need to put there, as well as the capability to print it to the file. Now again, I'm going to need to use a try block here. It's like before. What's different here, instead of character streams, is I need to write, using very specific methods, data to this file. So if I go customer output, and I want to print a string, or I want to send a string to a file, I need to go write UTF. And then type in customer, customer name. And this must be done in the exact same order as we put all this information in here. It's very, very, very important because that's how everything is going to work. So you have to do it that way. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to copy that, scroll back down here again, just so I have this as a guide so I know what I'm going to be working with. And whenever I printed all this out, I noticed that I have customer name in lowercase letters. So let's go correct that right now. Come back up here, type in name. And we're also going to come up here and do the same thing, make this capitalized. I want to keep everything consistent. And if you scroll back down, you're going to see that that error message went away. So we need to shoot all this other additional information out there in exactly the same way. So the next up, we're going to be sending an integer, which is customer age. So this is going to change to write int. Say it's not that hard to remember. And we're going to change this to age. Throw in another one. This is going to be customer debt. And this is going to be different because we're going to be passing a double. So what are you going to put in here? Take a wild guess. It's going to be double. Say it's not that hard to remember. One like this. Then what are we going to be passing? We're going to be passing O money, which is a Boolean. And then we're going to come down here, go O money, like this. We're going to be passing in here the last thing as a character. So this is going to be write C-H-A-R. And then this is going to be customer sex. 
And just so you know, I'll get rid of this right here because I don't need it anymore. But just so you know, you could also do right bite or right float, right long, or right short. So those are the other different methods you would use for other different data types. Then we're going to close off that try block. And that is all that I need to do for this guy. So that's all nice. We created the file. We created the ability to print to that file. And here we are going to be sending all that customer information over to that file. So I'm going to scroll back up here to the top again, back into the main function. And I'm going to actually close this file because we no longer are going to need it. We've already written to it. And I'm going to do that by going customer output close. There you go. It closes the connection. And what do we have here? We're going to have another potential IO exception being thrown. So I'm going to throw that inside of there. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do is go and get this file information. Throw this inside of here and scroll back down and we're going to create the method get file info and you'll be able to also retrieve information from data streams. Okay, so now we're down to our get file info method that we have to create. Uh, just get file info. Everything's going to all be together here in this one method. And first thing I'm going to print out is system print line info written to file. And then we need to open up our file again because we closed it, remember? And we're going to go new file just like we did before. And then put in the location of the said file, the dat file. And then I'm going to have to monitor the ending of this file. So I'm going to create this Boolean. It's going to do just that. You're going to see what that does here in a minute. And then I'm going to create a new try block. This time I need to go data input stream, get info. And that input stream is just an object that has methods to read data. That's all that it is. And then I'm going to go new data input stream, of course. And then on the new line, we're going to go new buffered input stream. Again, it's going to collect all of my information here so that I get it all at one time. Then I'm going to go new file input stream. And then I'm going to put list of names, of course and then close that off. Now I have a stream open up to be able to read all this information. Then I'm going to go while I don't get an end of file. I'm going to use a couple different things here. First, I'm going to create a string, of course. It's going to be customer's name is equal to get info. And then whenever you want to read a string from a file, and you need to do this in exactly the same order that all this information was entered, you need to go read UTF. And then we're just going to copy this guy. Very, very important that all this information is read in exactly the same order as it was put in. Then we're just going to change this to int customer age. And then this is going to be read int like that. And then we're going to go double because that's the next thing we put in. And that's customer debt. And then here it's going to be read double. It's kind of easy to remember. Boolean is the next thing that we put inside of here. So that's the next thing we're going to read. And then we're going to go read Boolean. And then the last thing is a character, and it is customer sex, and we're going to read character. So now we got all of our information pulled out of that guy. So now it probably makes some sense to print it out to screen so that something shows up here. And then we're just going to go customer name, I'll put that to screen, and then we're going to print out our customer age, customer debt, owe money and customer sex. And of course, these don't have, need to be printed to screen in this order. And this here is going to be end of try. And then we need to catch everything. So we're going to go catch EOF exception. And that is thrown whenever the end of the file is reached. And this is where the Boolean EOF comes in. We're going to say EOF is equal to true. So what's that going to do? Well, this is EOF up here. That's going to kick us out of the while loop. And that's all that we need to do with that. And then we're going to catch two other different exceptions here. File not found exception. We'll just leave that as E as well. And then I'm going to actually scroll up here, copy this guy, and inside of here, paste that. And I'm just going to change this to no file. And then we also need to catch IO exceptions. E. And we're just going to throw that in there. And if we execute it, you can see there's all of our information printed out to screen. Customer name, age, money they owe us, whether they owe us something or not, and their sex. All the code is underneath of the video. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.